to welcome everyone to our Merging Waters Pastoral Charge Sunday morning worship for May 9th. The sixth Sunday of Easter is uh, Christian Family Sunday. It is also Mother's Day, and so uh, happy Mother's Day to all and uh, to all those who nurture and nourish the lives of those in their immediate families and in their communities who act with mothering love. Have a wonderful and a happy day and a wonderful and happy Christian Family Sunday to all. If you'd like to follow along with the order of worship, it is available on our website at mergingwaters.ca forward slash worship dash online, as well as the links to our live uh, worships through Zoom and the recordings, which are posted usually within about 24 hours when we can get them up. Uh, it's usually a bit quicker than that even. And so welcome to all and good morning. I would like to invite our member Sandy Davis to lead us in the life and work of the people. Good morning, everyone. Happy Mother's Day and happy Christian Family Sunday. There's a lot to take note of in the community news this week. First of all, Church Cafe, which is online Fridays from 2 till 3, has some interesting topics for the month of May. A discussion on what we are called to be on May 14th, and on May 21st, a conversation about singer-songwriter Carrie Newcomer, who is described as a prairie mystic. Lynn Thompson still has lots of beautiful origami cards for sale, a bargain at a dollar per card. And for all you gardeners, there are two plant sales to support. One is a fundraiser for suitcases for Africa, and the other is Union's annual plant sale. Details for both are in the midweek message. The West Island Cancer Wellness Center is looking for volunteer trainers for the senior technology team. If you're 55 or older, comfortable with technology and love to teach others, this may be for you. But note that the deadline for applications is tomorrow. Roxborough United has a virtual online auction on Facebook for the next week. The St. Ads Market is now open from 9 till 2 Saturdays outside on the waterfront. And it's time to renew the Broadview magazine which I find a wonderfully written, thought-provoking magazine from the United Church of Canada. And more details will be coming soon. The Lakeshore Association of Artists and NOVA are holding an online artist exhibit as a fundraiser for NOVA during the month of May. There's also a wealth of links to other interesting happenings to be found on the church's website including the petition for Fairview Forest, food banks to support, meditation, and yoga. Lots and lots. So that's it for me. On to Ryan. Thank you, Sandy. And as we continue in our worship this morning, let us join in acknowledging our traditional territory. Merging Waters Pastoral Charge is located on land which has long served as a site of meeting and exchange amongst indigenous peoples and nations. Merging Waters honors, recognizes, and respects these nations as the traditional stewards of the lands and waters on which we meet and live today. As we come to a time of centering, I invite you to take a moment to place ourselves physically into a centered mood for our worship. So let's place our feet firmly on the ground, our mother, the earth, our home and life support. Find an upright and comfortable place to sit and take a centering breath where we breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth gently. I'd invite you to Close your eyes if you're comfortable and take another breath. And let us become aware of ourselves in this 
space and in this time. Be aware of your feet and your legs in your seated position of your posterior and your midsection. Are you comfortable? Is it, do you feel the core of yourself in there? As we come up to the beating of our hearts and the whirling and thinking of our minds, we seek to find balance between the two, not ignoring either. We are aware of ourselves within this and our connection through our breath to the breath of life that flows throughout all the world and floated above the waters of the moment of creation, breathing life into the world. As we are aware of our life-giving mother, the creator, let us center ourselves in our musical centering.
light gives birth to all color present within it in its presence we are reminded of how we exist that we move and live and have our being in the love of god that is ever present whether we see it or not whether we feel it or not it is always there in the presence of light and in the absence of light are all the colors of the rainbow a symbol that we ex use to express our welcome of inclusion for all people of all gender identities sexual orientations and senses of self all are welcome emerging waters and so in this moment i will light our christ candle or reminder of the light of god that lives within us all and our rainbow acknowledgement will remain as well on behalf of bell strong who has invited me to do so in her absence today and so you are also invited to do so at home if you have a candle that you can light and are safe to do so In the light that shines through the message of Jesus, we find the all-embracing, all-encompassing love of the divine. Embodied in flame, lived out in the world. I invite us to join in our celebratory hymn from We Are a Rainbow. Verse 4, let us sing. When we face the storms of life, we will never be alone. For our God will be with us on the way. Hand in hand, side by side, we won't be frightened anymore. As the morning night of tears breaks into day, we are our rainbow. The sign of covenant and peace, where the blood of tears will finally cease to be. Come shine your rainbow, splash your hues across the sky. I invite you to join in our spiritual focus with your part in the bold, and I will say both parts to lend voice to our leadership here. Let us gather, children of the human family. We gather to worship the spirit that nurtures all. In baptism, we are called beloved children of God. As such, we gather to worship the sacred one in all. Friends, neighbors, siblings in faith, we gather to worship in song, in prayer, in readings from the story, in thoughts and reflections. Let us worship God. Our opening hymn comes from More Voices, number 142, Oh, a Song Must Rise.
Let us join in our prayer of approach. O God of story, creator of us all, in the beginning you created humankind. We gather to worship you. We come as individuals, we come in family units, we come as neighbors and friends. We come to this time together where we are known by name, welcomed with all our fragilities and strengths. We gather with kindred spirits who long to live faithful to your calling. The Bible contains your story of love and encouragement and challenge to your creation, to your children, to us. Guide us, inspire us, challenge us, comfort us, and nurture us in this time of worship so that we might be enabled to return to our daily lives ready to engage fully with all of your creation. Today, may our hearts and minds be open to hear what your spirit is saying to us, we pray. Amen. Sandy, to lead us once more in our reading this morning. The gospel reading is from Luke 8, verses 19 to 21. 
Then the mother and brothers of Jesus came to him, but they could not reach him because of the crowd. And he was told, your mother and your brothers are standing outside wanting to see you. But he said to them, my mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and do it. Thank you, Sandy and Al. Let us listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. I invite you to join me in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts lead to actions that awaken your dream for this world. Mother God, our rock and our redeemer and sustainer. Amen. My mother and my brothers and sisters are those who hear the word of God and do it. Last week, we heard a message from Jesus that he was calling for his joy in God to be complete in us and that we were commanded to love one another as he loved us. This week, we hear a message of family, one that speaks to us of that which connects us through Jesus to the divine. The Holy One in all is found in hearing the message of love, dedication, gratitude, humility, and action for justice that comes from a heart that has been touched and moved by the word of God to faithful action. This message does not exclude the family of blood relations, but rather expands on the boundaries of what family has been defined as to Christ and perhaps to us as well. Christian Family Sunday is a way that we in the United Church acknowledge as a church family the many forms of family and nurturing that are expressed in our world, our society, and within our community. We lift up all of the blessings of family while we acknowledge that for some, family is a, a trigger word. It is not necessarily the same experience for everyone. For others, family is a source of comfort and joy, and we lift up all forms of family who have nurtured and formed the people we have become, be it through loving care and tenderness or through challenge and difficulty. The people who have impacted our development have helped to form whoever we are today. And we acknowledge that for many, family is a challenging word. And for many, it is a word of joy and celebration. In past, there has been felt a need to reinforce that families with two parents of opposite genders were not the only kind of family. And even though we honor and, and still honor these families, we honor also other kinds of families in our society. Les familles monoparentales, single parent families, foster and adoptive families, families with two moms or dads, single people and couples without children who maybe don't have kids of their own but are loving support to others. And the celebration of all family is expressed within the church and within these particular Sundays, even as we lift up the wonder and beauty of motherhood on Mother's Day. And that is within society in general. But within the church, within the family of faith, what is Christian Family Sunday? Is it those who find connection to the divine through Jesus and act on this connection through actions that help to awaken God's dream for us all in the world? 
You've all heard me say that in my prayers before the application for the day on a weekly basis. Is it a call for those of us who find connection through faith, life, and work of merging waters, for example? Are we a faith family? Well, that's a great question. What motivates family in this context? What motivates a Christian family? Certainly, we honor and respect families of faith of all kinds, of our neighbors in the Muslim and Jewish traditions, of families who embrace Buddhist and uh, Zionist and um, Zoroastrian traditions and faith of all kinds, and we respect those. But for us as a, a family within a Christian tradition, we're asked what our motivations are. Now we can turn to Jesus, who is a great example for us, and we hear of justice, kindness, walking humbly with our God. And so if we're asked to be motivated by love and to do justice, we're asked to think of others who are connected to us through our relationship with the, with the divine. And when Jesus tells us in the scriptures that he came to serve and not to be served, is that a call for us to love one another, as he asked us to do last week, to love one another as he has loved us, by giving himself over for our redemption. He is calling us to be motivated by God's love for the world, including ourselves in love that benefits the world. But it doesn't then look like concern for ourselves only or for others only, but for all. As we are not called to serve ourselves, but to serve others in order to serve the divine uh, will of love in the world, how does that look like in our actions? This is not a love that ignores the realities of brokenness that causes harm, but engages honestly with brokenness so that we may all heal. It doesn't seek to serve itself, but it does care for itself as well as others. And so perhaps we are also called to do so as we seek reconciliation with the world and with the divine and places of brokenness and to serve and support others in places of, of need and not control. Loving one another as Jesus loved us, I wonder about how easy it is for us to be as honest with one another as Jesus was with his community and with his world. In our narratives, Jesus tends to be quite forward with his disciples when he feels that they're not getting his message. And he's quite out and open with the government at the time and, and um, authorities at the time about the ways that the world was led. And it speaks to how we see we lead in the world and how we consider others in our work and in our lives. While families often don't want to disappoint one another and can have family secrets, a Christian family born of a message of Jesus and baptized into a faith family, we seek openness, honesty, and togetherness and not secrets and separation. And so to serve and not be served in this context, does that mean that we're not only called to this work, but are also safe to ask of ourselves if we, if we make decisions that are based on our interests or the interests of others and how that dynamic works out and to honestly seek help from one another when we feel that we're over our heads or that we're having trouble being faithful to that call, which can be very self-sacrificing, very self-giving, and so quite, quite a strain on ourselves and one another. And so are we asked also to be honest about that and to call 
on one another for support in how to continue to live our faithful lives, even when it's difficult. We have seen what family is and has been, and we have seen how Christian family can be when leaders try to serve their own needs, and it has caused more brokenness because it was not about acknowledging the need for healing and loving. We've seen that in history in, in Quebec in particular, but also around the world in, in many Christian communities, unfortunately, with great deals of brokenness and harm being done when individuals were not safe to acknowledge their need for healing and their own brokenness. And like families of origin and families of choice, they have formed us. They have informed who we as church have become but the question then is, what can family be? The family that we are forming in the church, in the world, in the United Church, and here at Merging Waters. There are many questions about where we've come from and where we are going. And how can we allow where we've come from and, and how we've been formed to inform what we'd like to do in the future or what we'd like to not do in the future. Does this passage help us to focus our reflections and our attitudes of the family we are forming and reforming into the future? What is the offspring? What comes of times when we embrace transparency and accountability, when we embrace people who come into our family in new ways, even as we honor the ways that have brought us to who we are. If we hear the word of the divine, that we love one another, all living beings, as we have been loved by Jesus, what will this family be like, look like, and do in the world in the future? Thanks be to God. Amen. At this time, we are invited by Reverend Eleanor Scarlett, who will lead us in a prayer, and Sarah Charters of the Mission and Service Fund to embrace our generosity of spirit and express our attitude of gratitude this Mother's Day. My name is Reverend Eleanor Scarlett. I'm the minister at Bolton United Church in Bolton, Ontario. As Mother's Day approach, let us pray this prayer for all mothers. Loving God, help us make Mother's Day more meaningful. Help us make it a time of generosity through our mission and service that helps change the lives of families at home and around the world. Help us make it even more of a celebration of those extraordinary people in our lives we call mom, who are like mothers to us and the people of all genders as well as trans and non-binary persons who offer mothering care. Help us make it more supportive of mothers who have lost children, children who have lost mothers, women who long to be moms and those who choose not to be mothers. Help us make it more open to those who don't fit the traditional model of family and feel left out during this holiday. Help us make it more caring of single moms, new moms, and those looking after their moms 
during the pandemic without the social support that are usually in place. Help us make it more aware of those whose mothering responsibility stretch across decades to span a lifetime. Help us make it more loving for those who want to draw closer to their mother and more healing to those who need to keep a distance. Help us make Mother's Day more, oh God, more generous, more open, more caring. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. support me in so many ways. I can't think of a better way to honor you than to make a difference for others. Mother's Day can be more meaningful, it can be more sensitive, it can be more inclusive, it can be more compassionate. It can be more generous. Mother's Day can be more. And that's why when you make a special gift through Mission and Service this Mother's Day, you will directly support families in need in Canada and around the world. You will help provide things like parenting classes, respite care, health clinics, safe shelter, and education to families who need it. And when you make a gift, you can choose to send any one of a variety of free e-cards that I guarantee you, you won't find on the shelves of your local card shop. Give a gift to help families and let someone in your life know they are your inspiration. Together, we can make Mother's Day more. As we reflect on our call to be a wider family as a people of faith, let us reflect on how we can offer up our openness, our honesty, and our embrace of family as we reflect on our musical offering.
here at Merging Waters each week, we lift our prayers of concern and joy, knowing that in the sharing, our burdens are lightened as we carry them together and our joys are brightened as they are shared and brighten the hearts of more people and that they are all shared with the divine presence, the one in all. Let us pray. Loving God, mother of great creation, you birth sunshine and cloud, sky and ground, water, life-giving water. Having breathed life into humanity at the moment of creation, you brought this world to life. In this life, we know that you are present in the darkness and in the light, in our hardships and in our times of celebration. In these days of concern, we are filled with a need for the awareness of your presence as we encounter loss and pain. We continue to lift up our prayers for those in the world whose lives are touched by COVID-19. Even as vaccines become available, we know that so many are being taken ill and struck down. Mothers torn from families, families torn from their nurturing parents. On this particular Family Christian Sunday, we thank you for being with us in these times of difficulty and ask that you continue to be with us as we lift up our concerns and offer our support to those who suffer from this illness and other illnesses, knowing that this pandemic has made it harder for them to get the help they need. We lift up our concern for those who suffer the loss and pain of miscarriages and infertility. For same-sex couples who want children but for whom barriers block them from sharing their love. We lift up those who struggle in relationship with their children and their parents, knowing that family is not always a word of blessing for all. Loving Mother God, we ask that you continue to be with all those who struggle in places of warfare and famine, particularly the people of Yemen. At this time, I invite all of you at home to share in the chat your prayers of concern that we may lift up together or to lift up your prayers in your hearts. We continue, loving God, to lift our concerns for members of our community here at Merging Waters and express our care and concern for Libby and Mario, our continued love and support for Richard and Wendy. We lift up our concern for all mothers who are distanced from their children. We lift up and hold dear to our hearts our care and concern and hopes for Lyle, Susan, and family, for Marilyn and David, for Andre and Megan, for Zoe, Frank, Sue, 
for Renata and family, for the McBride family. We lift up our care and love for Jeannie as she deals with the loss of her precious dog, Shiloh. And we lift up our continued concerns for healing and well-being for Mike, for Bill, and Julie. May these prayers of concern spoken aloud or in our hearts continue to be lifted together among us and within your spirit in the world so that those who need to be aware of your loving presence may be brought to fullness through our work inspired by your love. As we continue to lift our prayers, thinking of those who are without their mothers for this time and continue to lift them in our hearts. Even as these burdens are great, we know that there is much joy in this world, that the light of hope shines within each of us, and that our potential to share that love with others offers a promise that brightens our hearts. On a day where sunshine kisses leaves that offer the promise of blooms in the near future, and a day where vaccines offer the promise of greater togetherness and opportunity and a light at the end of a still long tunnel for those who have suffered under the weight of this pandemic, which is all of us, let's be honest, Mother God. We all seek the promise that is present in that and lift up our continued gratitude for your presence in our lives and found in one another. I invite all those at home to lift up prayers of thanksgiving and gratitude that they wish to share so that we may lift them together as well. As these prayers are shared, we continue to lift up our thanksgiving for one another in our work of nurturing nature, our work for the protection of the environment and for the birthing of new gardens, for the greening of this world and the community that they bless. We lift up our thanks for mothers who share love and mothers who share the struggle. For mothering love shared by people of all genders and for the grace and patience that is shown in family. We lift up our gratitude for all the good parents who share nurturing and support. And for the ministry of family our blessing of togetherness and loving shared in the nurturance of one another. For flowers and for weeds, for bumblebees and for birdsong, we lift our thanksgiving as we wake to a world filled with potential. Each week, Nagunhaga Regional Council lifts prayers for a different pastoral charge. And this week, at Merging Waters, we will, lift two, we will be lifting two of those pastoral charges. Westmount Park United Church. May their ministry and vision continue in times that are promising and challenging. And for Argentine, pastoral charge, which includes Knox Wesley United Church, La Chute United Church, and St. Mungo's United Church. May your ministries and relationships continue to blossom and bless this world. 
we lift these prayers, loving God, together. And as we continue in our prayers, let us join in lifting up the Jesus prayer for today as we continue to pray. O source of life, connectedness beyond simple perception. We hold our experience of you as sacred. May we choose to live the good you call for in our actions as well as our imaginings. Nourish our bodies and spirits, inspiring us to share the abundance we have. Challenge us to show understanding and love for others as we need to be understood and loved. Help us overcome our shortcomings to be our best selves through the faith that you have always shown in us. May we all make it so. Amen. Our commissioning hymn comes from More Voices, number 213. Take up his song. Let us sing. In baptism, the divine names us beloved children, kin to one another. As we go from this time of worship together, may we know God's love that found expression in the most vulnerable of human form. May the light of the spirit guide us, sustain us, and empower us to love. Go now in peace. Allez dans le Père Seigneur. Vaya con Dios. Skerengoa. Begpa la en cayon en Dios. Amen.